Well, thank you. I, mean, I don't know. I thought for a moment there, being invited onto an ECR platform, I must be getting somewhere. <laughs> uh, perhaps I'm almost respectable, and then all the MPs bugger off back to the House of Commons. <laughs> uh, well, the Tory ones, anyway. <laughs> uh, David, uh, my congratulations to you, uh, not just for getting this conference together, but for wanting to get this conference together, for wanting to get people from differing points of view across the political spectrum together on one platform. And what an absolute crying shame and tragedy it is that one of the groups seeking nomination for the designation from Elcom in this referendum absolutely point blank refuses to do that and work with anybody else. What a shame that is. But despite that, and despite the machinations of Westminster, um, and the careers of the apparatchiks, the British people, it would appear, are ignoring all of this. Good. You know, I hear a lot of talk that we must talk about trade, we must talk about jobs, we must talk about business and regulations. And the, the funny thing is uh, that I guess I'm actually better qualified to speak on this than anybody else in the Eurosceptic debate because I spent 20 years trading internationally. I spent 20 years buying and selling shipments and moving shipments of copper and aluminium and lead and zinc and tin and nickel all over the world. Um, I worked in what was perhaps the nearest thing to a genuine free trade business anywhere on earth. Oh, apart from the fact that if you wanted to import aluminium into the European Union, you had to pay a 7% tariff. So I know it and I get it. And I ran a small business for nine years. I understand regulation. I understand that you know, the average small business spends 25% of their life just dealing with red tape. So not for one moment uh, would I not f would say that these things really do matter because they do. However, I feel the other side have less of a trump card than perhaps they used to. They used to be able to scare us by saying that three million jobs would be lost, that all trade would cease. And somehow, that is not really cutting through anymore. And I think the pro-business case and the rational case, that if little countries like Norway and Switzerland can get their own trade deals that suit them, then we, as their biggest market and biggest trading partner in the world, can find an even better deal. And I think the killer argument uh, for, the, for the British public on trade is, and I think David mentioned it earlier, just look how many German motor cars yes. there are on the streets of London or bottles of wine in the wine bars or wherever I may be going later. <laughs> so, so that I think, you know, and I'm not saying we should be complacent, but ladies and gentlemen, there is one big killer argument with which we can win this referendum. Uh, and my concern is there are, too, there are far too many people based here in Westminster who fight shy of dealing with this argument. They feel uncomfortable. Their wives or husbands at Notting Hill dinner parties um, are made to feel embarrassed that such a thing should even be discussed. And of course there's a whole class in this country for whom open door immigration has been absolutely terrific. For big employers it has kept wage inflation down. Uh, for the wealthy it means cheaper chauffeurs, cheaper nannies and cheaper gardeners. Uh, but my advice to people is they need to get out of London, uh, to get away from affluence and go and see what open door immigration has done to the lives and the shape of communities out there in this country. It is the number one issue by far. You know, any poll will tell you this is the issue about which people are concerned. But for us in this referendum, it is the issue through which we can motivate and mobilise people to go out and vote. Now I say that, having led a party from relative electoral obscurity to winning a national election. And we'd made the arguments from day one about sovereignty. We'd made the arguments about democratic self-control. We'd made the arguments about trade. We'd done all of these things. And yes, yes, we could get the odd 5% in a by-election. But the reason we started to actually get 28% in a national election, a European election, is we connected with people on mass immigration. They understood uh, that their wages had been driven down over the course of the last 10 years. They understood that the reason it took longer uh, to get into the local hospital was the population of their area had increased more quickly than the provision of health care. They understood 
that getting their kids into the right primary schools in some parts of eastern England was now becoming impossible from the age of five without a 20-mile bus journey. They understood all of these things. And I have to say, when I look at what's happened uh, in this European debate thus far, the single most powerful thing I've heard anywhere or read came from Alison Pearson, the Daily Telegraph journalist, the novelist, when she wrote, I've been trying to follow the EU debate and lots of economists have been telling me we'd be worse off outside the European Union. Then this charming Ruth Lee lady came along and made a very good argument that by breaking free from the customs union, we could be better off. But to be honest, Alison Pearson said, I still don't really understand what a customs union is. But she wrote in the first week of January this year, having witnessed the scenes in Cologne, I now understand that if those limitless numbers of people that have been allowed into Germany within four short years will all have German passports, that means they can all come to Britain. And I will vote for Britain to leave the European Union, because for me, this referendum is about whether our daughters and granddaughters can dress as they please, go out and socialise and smile in the street. And folks, that is bloody powerful. Because to win this referendum, we've got to win across. Oh, I'll be told, I'm appealing to the core vote. Well, I'm not, folks, and here's why. On the biggest sample opinion poll that has yet been done, 10,000 voters conducted at the end of November and the beginning of, of December. Of the undecided voters, 38% of them said that the statement that was most likely to make them change their mind and vote for Britain to leave was, leaving is the only way that we can control our borders and set our own immigration policy. And that was followed by 18% of the undecided voters saying, if leaving would save the UK money, that it'd be better spent at home, I could be persuaded to leave. There's nearly 60% of the undecided voters that we can shift on the simple issues of border controls and money. And we need to man and woman up and to face these issues. So it is, it is about getting not just the undecideds to vote, but it's about getting non-voters to go out and vote. I, we shouldn't be aiming for a 66% turnout in this referendum. We should be aiming our sights much higher. Alex Salmon's referendum got nearly 86% turnout. I believe this referendum can be 80% plus turnout, and if it is, we will win. But we have to face up to the issues. And I know, again, that same group of people will tell me this is all so desperately negative. Oh, no, it isn't. What it is doing is identifying what the British people believe is the biggest single issue problem that we face and providing them with a solution. By voting to leave the European Union, not only do we take back control of our borders, but we're able to put in place an Australian-style point system so that we can choose who comes to live, work and settle in our country. And we'll have people with trades and skills. We'll have people that bring their own medical insurance. We'll have people coming into this country that don't have criminal records. It's a positive. It's a solution to a problem. Yes, we must campaign on a whole variety of issues, but it is this issue. It is this issue of border controls, regulating who comes into our country and security. It is on that that we will win and perhaps win resoundingly. Thank you.